I skipped the Friday Fives this week in order to provide some unsolved missing person cases out of Canada. Case number one, Shelly and Basque. Shelly was last seen at approximately 8.30 p.m. on May 3rd of 1983 as she walked down Highway 16 toward her home near Highway 40 in Hilton, Alberta. She has not been seen or heard from since. Articles of her clothing were found near the Abasque River. Foul play is suspected, but her remains have never been recovered and her case remains unsolved. Shelley Ann Basque is classified as endangered missing. She was 16 years old at the time of her disappearance, a Caucasian female with brown hair and brown eyes. She stood at 5 feet tall and 90 pounds. She may use the nickname or alias Shelley Ann Urban. She has freckles and a small scar on her forehead. She's affected by rheumatoid arthritis and also has a hearing impairment. Her teeth were in perfect condition at the time of her disappearance. She was last seen wearing a gray and burgundy jacket, a purple sweater, and a red and burgundy velour sweater. Blue jeans and blue and gray cougar running shoes. She was carrying a blue binder and a ring which has a green stone an opal stone earrings, and a necklace with two red hearts. If you have any information regarding Shelley's case, you may contact the National Center for Missing and Exploited Children within Canada or outside Canada, listed below. Case number two, Marilyn Bergeron. Marilyn said she was going for a walk, but never came back. Marilyn purchased the coffee at Cafe Depot of St. Revelon, Quebec, Canada on February 17th of 2008 at 4.03 p.m. This was the last transaction on her credit card. Before her move to Quebec City on February 16th, she lived in Montreal for three years. Her family fears for her security, her whereabouts remain unknown, and her case remains unsolved. Marilyn Bergeron is classified as endangered missing. She was 24 years old at the time of her disappearance, a Caucasian female with brown hair and green eyes. She is 5'7 and 115 pounds. She speaks French, English, and a bit of Spanish. She has a tattoo of a pegasus on her side between her right breast and shoulder. She is known to dye her hair different colors. She was last seen wearing a long black jacket with faux fur on the hood, black boots, and gray velvet trousers. She also had a backpack. She has a credit card, but no IDs. If you have any information regarding Marilyn's case, please contact the police department in Quebec listed below. Case number four is Tamara or Tamara Lynn Chipman. Tamara was last seen on September the 21st, 2005, hitchhiking on Highway 16, which is also known as the Highway of Tears. It is called this because several women who have either gone missing or murdered while on this road. She was last seen near an industrial park outside of Prince Rupert, British Columbia, Canada. Five police suspected and her case remains unsolved. Tamara Lynn Chipman is classified as endangered missing. She is of native descent, female. She has brown hair and brown eyes, 5'8 and 130 pounds. There are no known aliases or nicknames that she goes by. She had recently shaven her head before she disappeared, but is known to wear blonde, brunette, and red wigs. She has a scar on the right side of her forehead and a small freckle beneath her left eye. She was last seen wearing blue jeans and a light blue jacket. If you have any information regarding Tamara's case, please contact the RCMP Provincial Unsolved Homicide Unit or Crime Stoppers listed below. Case number four, Tyler Walton. Tyler Walton was last seen November the 9th, 2009 at approximately 7 p.m. in Williams Lake, British Columbia, Canada. Tyler is a very outgoing person whose disappearance was very uncharacteristic. An investigation into his disappearance has determined that Tyler was involved in a very low-level drug trade. 
Given the inherent risk associated with his lifestyle, police cannot discount the possibility that involvement in the drug trade have, may have played a role regarding Tyler's disappearance. Police are also looking for two individuals that were seen driving with Tyler just before he disappeared. On one such occasion, the trio were seen together in Tyler's own vehicle. Tyler's financial and telephone records have shown no activity since he has vanished. His whereabouts remain unknown and his case remains unsolved. Tyler Walton is classified as endangered missing. He was 26 years old at the time of his disappearance, a Caucasian male with brown hair and brown eyes. He is 5'11 and 150 pounds. He is known on aliases or nicknames. He usually wears a full beard and is considered in good physical shape. It is unknown what clothing he was last seen wearing. If you have any information regarding Tyler's case, please contact the Williams Lake Police Department attached below. Case number five, Ashley Lee Louise Peatman Wilson. Ashley had been living with her maternal grandparents in the west side of Kelowna, British Columbia. She went out on June 1st, 2005 with friends in a vehicle and never returned home. She was last seen in City Park in Kelowna, British Columbia, Canada on June the 5th, 2005. Her whereabouts remain unknown and her case remains unsolved. Ashley Lee Louise Peatman Wilson is classified as endangered missing. She was 18 years old at the time of her disappearance, a Caucasian female with blondish brown hair and green eyes. She is 5'4 and 95 pounds. She goes by the nickname Ash. It is unknown what she was last seen wearing. If you have any information regarding her case, please contact the RCMP Serious Crime Unit listed below. Case number six, James Gregory Lee, better known by Jamie, by his friends. Jamie walked away from the Smoky Flats campgrounds just south of Grand Prairie, Alberta, Canada around 4.30 or 5 a.m. on September the 4th, 2011. He walked away after an argument with friends who prevented him from driving while intoxicated. He has not been seen since. His direction of travel is unknown. His whereabouts remain unknown and his case remains unsolved. James Gregory Lee is classified as endangered missing. He was 19 years old at the time of his disappearance, a Caucasian male with copper reddish brown hair and hazel eyes. He is 6'3 and 140 pounds. He goes by the nickname Jamie. He has extremely notable eyes as he has very round, thick, long lashes. He has very dark, bushy eyebrows. He is very tall and skinny and wears size 12 shoes. He was last seen wearing a brown hoodie, blue jeans, and black and turquoise blue Adidas shoes similar to the photo shown here. If you have any information regarding Jamie's case, please contact the Grand Prairie RCMP listed below. The final case is that of Johanna Sear. Johanna lived with her mother in the area of St. Laurent, Montreal, Quebec. In August of 1978, her mother had to take a small trip, leaving Johanna in the care of her boyfriend. Upon return, Johanna was nowhere to be found. Her boyfriend told her that he had taken Johanna to Boston to visit his mother. Johanna's mother and her boyfriend went to Boston, Maryland to pick Johanna up, but it had been found that she was not there, nor had ever been there. Her mother returned home to file a missing person report. The boyfriend was questioned and released due to lack of evidence. He later claimed that Johanna died in the mother's absence and was buried before her return. The mother argued that her daughter had probably been sold and believes that she's alive today still. In 2016, a woman from the U.S. came forward stating that she was Johanna Sear, but DNA counted that was not true. Johanna Sear is classified as endangered missing. She was two years old at the time of her disappearance. She is of biracial descent and is Caucasian African-American female. She has brown hair and brown eyes. 
Her height and weight are unknown, but she has a scar on her right hand between her index and middle fingers in the shape of the letter Y. If you have any information regarding Johanna's case, please contact the National Center for Missing and Exploited Children inside Canada or outside Canada listed below. Thank y'all so much for watching. Don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button if you have not already. And hit the notification bell so you know when I upload my next video. And I will catch you guys on my next video.